And now it's time for another edition of What Would Jello Do? Hi, I'm Jello, in case you haven't guessed, and this is my beat up old stove. One burner's already out of order, this one is about to die, and that was the other main burner. And now, here is my fridge, which again, I need to replace. It's chewing up too much energy, there's water coming out the bottom, you know, the Ice box has a mind of its own, has the worst tasting ice cubes you could possibly imagine for you mixed drinkers and all. Well, why am I whining about all this? Because this is just a tiny example of what is happening much, much worse for millions and millions of Americans and beyond now that the economy has crashed and what they are calling a double dip recession. Let's face it, this is a depression. And all they offer is tiny little bits of, oh, how about a few jobs? Or, oh, how about, pretty please, can we get a little bit of a surcharge on millionaires? We need to help save the middle class. Hey, wait a minute. What about people below the middle class? What about the 15 million Americans who aren't just below middle class? They are living below the poverty line, which some people claim is now a third of America's children. So, what happens to them? It's not just about the middle class, even with all the efforts to third worldize America till there's the very rich and the very poor. Clear back in the early days of Reagan, his budget director David Stockman said, we're working on the Brazilian model, one of the most notoriously unequal countries in South America, if not the world. So, go back when they say, well, let's restore the American dream, bring back prosperity. Couldn't it be more like, well, they always say the 1950s, right? Family values, Joe McCarthy, but yeah, look at the 50s, it was dazzling then. Rockets going off and fins on the cars and hey, we built the interstate highway system largely from scratch. It was when it was not just yes we can, but yes we did things. Where do we get the money? Well, even under the days of a Republican regime of Eisenhower and Vice President Richard Nixon, the tax rate on zillionaires and the super rich and even rich people, 91%. Who rolled that tax back first but a Democrat, John F. Kennedy, down to 76%. Then by the time of Ronald McReagan, it was down to about 50%. And now, the official rate is between 30 and 35 percent, but a lot of these companies either relocate te technically to the Cayman Islands or Dubai or whatever, and then uh, they aren't paying taxes at all, and sometimes they even brag about it. So, instead of a little surcharge on the millionaire's tax, even bumping it back up to Reagan would do a huge amount to counter these budget deficits so we can save our health care and social security. They don't even consider that. I say it doesn't go far enough. How about 100%? In other words, once again, I repeat my call for a maximum wage. I used to say six figures and it's payback time. I'll be generous. I'll compromise to the Nutsies on the other side. Seven figures and it's payback time. After all, after you've made your first million, what is there to do? You've got enough money to live. It's all a game after that. Wealth addiction. I must have more, more, more. Everybody else must have less, 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 or the game isn't any fun anymore. No. Put the wealthy addicts into rehab with a maximum wage and start tilting things back where people can live with human dignity again.